There's nothing, there's nothing I enjoy more than visiting a shop with a zany name. For example, if I want to buy some building supplies, I don't want to go to Bob's Building Supplies. I want to go to Bricks R Us, Plank You Like, or Shelves A Go Go. <laughs> and if your name's Dave and you run a tyre shop, you better prefix that Dave with a crazy or you aren't going to get a single red cent out of me. Please, allow Mick and myself to explain exactly what I'm talking about. Well, Mick, here we are at the Bolt Bloke. Yes, and our mission is to secure an interview with the Bolt Bloke himself, who, well, he's notorious within the industry as being a bit of a recluse. Bit of a Howard Hughes figure. What's he look like, Mick? Well, no one's certain for sure, though. We should have a bit of a head start because they've put his picture up just outside the shop. <laughs> Fantastic. And, and Tone, I think we've, we've come on the right day. But he is here because, well, the Boltmobile's parked just out the front. Let's go and have a word. I certainly do have a lot of bolts here. No sign of the bloke here, though. Uh, here we go. Excuse me, sir. Uh, we're from the ABC. Are you, in fact, the Bolt bloke? Sure am. Right. Your name is? Grant. Right. You don't look very much like the picture out on the sign out there. I hope not. Is there, is there like a trick to it? Like, do you spin round really quickly and all of a sudden you turn into the Bolt bloke? No. Right. Is there a nut bloke as well? Only the blokes that work behind the counter. Right. That's the nut bloke out there, I suppose. Yeah, in the, in the feral jumper. <laughs> This is one of Melbourne's top travel agencies, El Fierro's, and you've just got to see the decor in this place. Sure. Come inside. This is incredible, isn't it, Mick? Mm -hmm. Scientists have been examining this travel agency for years, and they have no idea how it was constructed. I don't know, Tone. I just wish there was somewhere you could get a decent-sized red trunk. Hang on, Mick. Check this place. Let's go in. Well, we're here with the manager now, and tell me, sir, would you have something in, say, like a big red trunk? Would you have anything like that? Yeah, I have one of this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I didn't see those. Yeah, we'll take, uh, 50. Well, Mick, if you have a look over there, it's the Nietzsche Hair Studio. They won't, in fact, do your hair unless you can prove it exists. Mick, what's that? I think it's a dashboard tone, and, well, it doesn't look in good health. Jeez, what sort is it? I don't know, I think it's from a Mazda 323. Needs help fast. What are we going to do, Mick? Tone, I think we're going to have to take it to the dashboard doctor. Let's go. We found this in the road. Is there anything you can do? We can fix him. We okay, can... okay. It doesn't have private cover. I'm just right. letting you know that, okay? <laughs> look at the other patients, Mick. Oh, look, this is the casualty area for the dashboards. And look at them. So many dashboards and they've just been struck down in the prime. It's like the killing field. Well, Mick, I don't know if you know this, but it's actually Padre Pio's day. <laughs> All right, Padre. And as the Padre always says, pray, hope and don't worry, which is a lot better than his last slogan tone, which was pray, hope and keep your pants on. And it's a pity they couldn't get a picture of the Padre. They've had to use one of Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> New York has Bloomingdale's, London has Marks and Spencer's, but only Melbourne has Job Warehouse. Yes, here it is. And when it comes to window dressing and display work, nobody does it better. Check out this, Sando. You've got uh, a pile of old combs here, some string, a stack of busted shavers, right. and it's also well labelled. Check that sign out, Mick. It's fantastic. Well, Tone, we've drunk in the beauty of the windows. I, I think it's time to go and talk to the brains behind this whole operation, the master designer himself. Let's go in. Sure, here we go. Hello, we were just wondering... No, no filming in the shop, please. Sure? No, yeah, no filming. Quick interview. No, no, it's okay. There's plenty of room, isn't there? I mean, well, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. Tone will never recognise us. We are going in. Excuse us. We're just Hi. a couple of passers by. And we were what? 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 I've never seen you before. I've never seen you before. I'm just a, I'm just a fan of your fabric. You... Oh. Okay, now Tone, we're not taking no for an answer. Let's go. Witty if you're in trouble. Excuse me. You're from the ABC. Business here. Come on out. Hey, get with the hoof. Now one of these dump a huge pile of steaming number twos right at your doorstep. Where would you go if you wanted some decent slacks? That would depend on how many pairs I wanted, Tone. Well, what say you wanted, say, a whole stack? Then I'd come here, to Stacks of Slacks. <laughs> well, I'm talking now to Amanda, who works here at Stacks of Slacks. And Amanda, I can't help but notice that the slacks here aren't in fact in stacks, are they? They're on racks. They are. Well, why don't you call the shop Racks of Slacks? 
or maybe stacks of slacks on racks or maybe racks of dacks in stacks possibly sounding a bit like a dr seuss story really isn't it uh, does anyone come in here famous at all max gillies has been max gillies has been in here so max has come down to stacks of slacks to get some dacks has he he has right this is mick and tone reporting from stacks of slacks for the late show Richardson, Bart Cummings, Senator Robert Ray, just some of the many Australians who buy their clothing from the dishevelled gentleman. And I'm speaking now to the owner of the dishevelled gentleman, Mr Enrico Valletta. Good evening, Tony, and of course, good evening, shoppers. Now, tell us about your store. Most certainly, Tony. At the dishevelled gentleman, we specialise in clothing for the badly dressed man about town. Here are some fine examples. Coming up first, we have the very attractive Jason in one of our popular body shirts. You'll notice, of course, the extra long tail. So it can't be tucked in. Correct. And for this month only, we, we, we give you that shirt without a middle button and with complimentary sweat stains under the armpits. Fantastic. Next up, we've got Tom. Out you come, Tommy. He's wearing a, he's wearing a pair of permanently unpressed tracky ducks. Cut low at the back so you can show off that provocative first two inches of bum crack. Well, that certainly is, that certainly is a shabby look. Why, thank you, Tony. And finally, we have Mick in a pair of... No, he's actually wearing a jacket, an imitation tweed jacket. And note the stylish dandruff piles on each shoulder. <laughs> Now, I understand that jacket is fully reversible. It certainly is, Tony. As you can see, it looks equally shit house inside or out. Now, Enrico. Yes. What about the ladies? Ah, they do not miss out. The fairer sex can come along to our sister shop, the Slovenly Park, where you'll find exposed bra straps, laddered stockings, and of course, wire rim knickers for a permanently visible panty line. Classy. Yes, you look like you're wearing a coat hanger. In fact, you are wearing a coat hanger. Well, uh, thanks for coming in, Enrico. Oh, it's a pleasure. And remember, viewers, if it's good fashion you're after, come to 178 North Road, Chatfield. If not, come to the Dishevelled Gentleman, where good fashion is not just a promise, it's an impossibility. <laughs> coming up later tonight on ABC TV, Songs of the Highlands, with Hamish Can't Mind for Nuts, Mick Muirhead. I'm born in Scotland, down the wild, windswept moors, where the high road and the low road always lead you to your door. And the wee smiling children dancing cute around the lock, while their father's drinking whiskey with people called Jock. It's a dream of born in Scotland, and me heart calls me home, with its banners and its mountains.